some people love Shakespeare, others not so much. But a Shakespeare adaptation is always a good time. Constellation Theater at 14th and T is featuring a musical called Desperate Measures. It's based off of Shakespeare's play Measure for Measure, but it's set in the Wild West. A gunslinging nun teams up with a sheriff and a saloon dancer to save her brother. Buy tickets now at constellationtheater.org. The show runs through March 17th. Once again, that's constellationtheater.org. Today on CityCast DC. So a few years ago, DC set up its own crime lab to process evidence and let investigators work cases faster. It has not gone so well. The lab lost its accreditation last year. It was a big embarrassment for the police. Now there's a bit of good news about at least part of the operation coming back online. City Paper's Alex Coma has reported on it and is here to explain why it matters to you and me. Today is Monday, March 11th. I'm Michael Schaefer, and here's what DC is talking about. So DC's crime lab has a beleaguered, at least recent past, but there is some good news. Uh, What's going on? Yeah, well, it seems that things are improving at least slowly over at the crime lab. Um, Anyone who has paid any attention to this saga over the last few years will know that DC's independent forensic lab has not been able to test pretty much any evidence, which is a big problem at a time when um, violent crime in the city has been rising. And uh, the one small silver lining over the last few years is that there have been some improvements at sort of getting things back on track. The lab had, among other things, lost its professional accreditation, essentially the certification that it needs from forensic experts to actually handle evidence and then be able to present those in court when criminal prosecutions are happening. So the lab has been spending a little over two years trying to get those certifications back, and it has now partially done so. Not all the way, only for a few units of the lab. Um, But it is on its way. So in these two years, since they lost their accreditation, which was a thing that was considered very embarrassing for the city, for those of us who don't care deeply about lab accreditation situations, how does this actually affect us day to day? I mean, in, in terms of the ability to prosecute crime or prove cases or exonerate witnesses or whatever. Yeah, it's all very uh, nerdy technical stuff, but it has like really, really substantial impacts. I mean, consider like a shooting, whether it's fatal or not. You know, there are, you know, ballistics evidence on the scene that DFS technicians are still able to go out and collect. But then when they send back, say, a shell casing, they can't be the ones actually testing it. They've disbanded their firearms examination unit because of a variety of problems with it. And they've sent this stuff elsewhere? Yeah, they have to send it to private labs. Um, In some cases, they get help from federal agencies um, where they have extra capacity. But this is stuff that's cost the D.C. government you know, millions more. I mean, they stood up this private lab back in 2012 with the idea that they wouldn't have to do this sort of thing anymore. They used to have to rely on the feds. And so they spent all this money creating a new crime lab. It's got a gorgeous building um, down in Southwest. And yet nobody could really do much of anything there. So it was creating problems getting these cases prosecuted because it takes longer, frankly, to send out evidence to these third party forensic experts and and get it to come back. And it costs more money. It, It was a situation that was making precisely nobody happy. And the city's attorney general had said, like, he can't per se prosecute offenders with this stuff. Yeah, both him and even more crucially, the United States attorney who manages most felony prosecutions in the city, both uh, the former attorney general, Carl Racine, and his successor, Brian Schraub, as well, in addition to USAO, Matt Graves, have been very critical of the crime lab over these last few years for sort of the way that it's handled evidence processing. And, and they've said, look, we're just going to pay, you know, it's going to suck. It's going to mean we're, we're going to have to, you know, pay money that we'd rather use on other stuff for independent testing. And that has sort of been the state of play in, in D.C. prosecutions for the last two years. And I know that when I I got called for jury duty and in the voir dire, it was a murder case. I said, yeah, you know, I know about the situation at the crime lab. And that uh, was not necessarily a good data point (laughs) for the prosecution. 
And uh, I don't know if that's the reason, but I was not ultimately picked for that jury. Um, can you tell me, what, why did the lab lose accreditation in the first place? What was going on there that was so shady? The long and short of it is that starting in, call it 2019 or so, there started to be some serious questions coming mostly from federal prosecutors about how the lab was operating. There were some serious tensions between the federal prosecutors with the people who were running the crime lab over their methods. And there are a variety of investigations back and forth that sort of deepened a lot of hurt feelings between the two sides. So federal prosecutors start taking a lot harder look at what the crime lab is doing. Eventually, we come to a, a situation where there is a discovery through a variety of, of probes that the crime lab made a pretty serious mistake. They inadvertently linked two murder cases, saying that they found evidence that the bullets were fired from the same gun, essentially, when that was, in fact, not the case. And, you know, what's worse in the eyes of the lab's critics is that they, you know, weren't fully transparent about admitting their mistake. They might have taken some steps to cover up what they did wrong. And as they brought more of this to light, with the help of some independent experts, they eventually took this to their accrediting body who said, whoa, 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 it is not appropriate for you all to continue doing not just firearms testing, which generated the problem in the first place, but any kind of drug testing, forensic chemistry, DNA testing, all sorts of things, because they had so many questions about the lab's veracity and its methods. And now the lab has pushed back pretty hard on this, as has the mayor who runs the lab, saying that a lot of these critiques were unfair. And there's some decent evidence to suggest that is true. But it is not at all in dispute that the lab made a very serious error with these murder cases that have very real consequences. Those murder cases are still playing out because of all of this controversy. The brand new Arbor at Tacoma is built for your most convenient urban living. Whether you want to enjoy the vibrant Tacoma, D.C. community or comfortably retreat into a sleek sanctuary all your own. The kitchens have striking dark navy and white cabinets and throughout the home, there are wood floors and smart home technology. Some homes even have a private outdoor space. With a quick walk to the metro, you can easily head into downtown or stay close and enjoy the retail that's on site. Located at 218 Cedar Street Northwest, the Arbor Tacoma offers brand new one and two bedroom condos starting in the upper 300,000s. Visit thearborattacoma.com for more information. That's Tacoma with a K. So T-H-E-A-R-B-O-R-A-T-T-A-K-O-M-A.com. I mean, this seems like it was really embarrassing, potentially led to, you know, a situation where either someone who should have gotten behind bars didn't or someone who did get behind bars shouldn't have. Did anybody lose their job over this or was there any consequence from the mayor for employees? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, so it started at the top. The mayor forced out the old director of the crime lab, Jennifer Smith. And then, as I said, you know, they fired the entirety of the firearms examination unit, which handled these ballistic cases. And they have literally said they have no plans to start testing any of that evidence for the foreseeable future. So, yes, I mean, certainly the lab has gotten uh, really uh, put under the microscope in the wake of all of this. But, you know, as you said at the outset in that question, the kind of the bizarre thing is that the mayor has promised to take a look at whether people were wrongfully convicted using crime lab evidence, she promised to do that a couple of years ago, and they have yet to even so much as start doing so. It's a, a really bizarre situation where everyone acknowledges there were problems there, but, you know, it's hard and expensive to figure out exactly the size and scope of those problems. And nobody especially wants to start rifling through old criminal cases and, you know, bringing up some past ghosts. So um, it's been uh, uh, tough sledding. I can think of quite a few people who would, which is to say people who think they're wrongfully incarcerated. <laughs> no one in the city government wants to do that. You are right. We have certainly heard from some people who feel the DFS screwed up in, in their cases and, and they want another look. All right. So what have they been doing to win back the accreditation they lost? You mentioned that certain parts of the lab had gotten it back. Which parts were those? 
Yeah. So it's the parts that handle um, drug testing. That is the first part of lab that got reaccredited. And it could well be within the next year or so that the forensic chemistry unit, which handles DNA and, and other stuff in that area, could soon be reaccredited as well. So that's not nothing for sure especially because federal prosecutors have been saying they've had a really hard time prosecuting a lot of these drug cases because, you know, if you can't test the evidence that you find on someone to prove that it is indeed drugs or there is indeed drug residue, stuff like that, then it's really hard to to make a case. And if you're waiting on an outside lab, then that makes it all the harder. And that's not nothing, because one of the big criticisms of the United States attorney for D.C. in the midst of this crime run up is that, according to critics, he doesn't bring enough cases. Exactly right. And he has pointed to the crime lab's failings. I mean, you know, you can call it finger pointing, but there is certainly a a nugget of truth to it that that's a a huge part of the problem. He's been very clear that there's been a drop in drug prosecutions. And some of that is his discretion, but a lot of it is the crime lab's problems. But just so people know, it's not like every police department in the world has a crime lab. Places, you know, smaller places or whatever, there are labs you can send stuff out to. It's just going to be more expensive and less quick than if you own your own lab. Yeah, I mean, a big problem with all of this stuff, we should say up front, is what a lot of people in the industry call the CSI effect. You see CSI, you think that things work a very particular way. The actual way that all of this stuff works is a lot more complicated. To the extent that big cities like D.C. have crime labs, they're often contained within the police department, and it's all sort of one unit. But there's been a lot of thinking that says that's not a good way to do things, that the cops will put pressure on what should be independent scientific analysis. And that that's why D.C. was trying to be a leader when they set up a crime lab like this, try, you know, making it independent, putting it under, you know, it's still an arm of the city government, but it's not the police chief calling the shops. And, you know, that way they wouldn't have to use the feds. They wouldn't have to use the private labs that you allude to. D.C. thought it was being um, innovative and uh, it's kind of been the opposite as this played out. So what happens from here? Is there a chance they could lose it again or are they going to win more stuff back? How does this all work? Yeah, well, it's sort of a big unanswered question because, frankly, the mayor has not been terribly transparent about any of this. I I think someone observed to me just the other day that they felt that her biggest priority was keeping the crime lab out of the headlines, not actually improving it. And it's hard to dispute that. The first step for them is to finish getting these units reaccredited, which, as I said, they are making some progress on. But a huge problem is that they still don't have a a permanent director of the agency since they fired Jennifer Smith. And they have essentially had the chief medical examiner for the city pulling double duty and running the crime lab as well. He's been doing that longer than D.C. law allows him to, but the mayor has frequently disregarded that law. So they need to hire somebody that actually provides some leadership. Well, it's not exactly an appealing job. Like, come run an unaccredited crime lab. (laughs) You know, that's it. That's part of the problem. But, you know, guess what? It pays a couple hundred thousand dollars. So uh, that sounded pretty good to this reporter, you know. Well, Alex, have you thought about throwing your hat into the ring? <laughs> you know, I never did very well in chemistry class, so I don't think they want me. Well, maybe they didn't either. <laughs> <laughs> that is becoming clear. But here's the issue. They don't have anyone to test firearms, even if they uh, reaccredit all of these different parts of the units, which it would be, you know, a positive step that's one of the main things that the crime lab is supposed to do is test ballistics. They can't count on federal help forever when these agencies are saying, you know, we're doing this to you as a temporary favor and you can't keep paying for private labs forever. I have never seen any plan from DFS or the mayor that lays out what they're going to do. And that feels all the more strange when you see shootings and murders with firearms increasing um, at rates that they have never for the last few decades. It's very strange. Alex, thank you for being here, man. It is always a pleasure. That's all for today here on CityCast DC. If you enjoyed the show, you actually don't need accreditation to tell all your friends about it. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more news from around the city. Bye. Bye.